Ready your thunder hammers and storm shields, because today we're talking smash captains in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about making some excessively fighty space marine characters and using them in game. In the video we'll talk about how I think smash captains have changed from 8th edition to 9th edition, the various ways that you can build smash captains these days, a few solid options across the many many chapters, and how I think about using them in game. Loads to cover here, so let's jump straight into it. So if you've not heard the term before, a smash captain usually refers to a space marine captain who's been decked out for melee combat, usually with a focus on dealing the absolute most amount of damage that he can do, but if there's anything else to increase his durability and his staying power against enemy attacks, then that's always good as well. For a while in 8th edition, Blood Angels captains were some of the most competitive units you could field. I have fond memories of this little guy on the right, jumping into the midst of an enemy army, killing one massive tank, fighting again, and killing another huge target. You just had to sacrifice quite a lot of command points to allow that to happen. In 9th though, things aren't quite as simple as 8th, character protection isn't as good as it used to be, you have to be right near an enemy unit, not just as far away as possible. Captains don't give themselves re-rolls anymore, they only give it to core units. Both Thunderhammers and I'd argue Storm Shields as well have been nerfed. Thunderhammers are only AP-2, and Storm Shields no longer give you a 3 plus invul, which I would argue is usually stronger than a 2 plus, 4 plus save. Finally, some of their core stratagems have been nerfed, you can no longer fight twice with them, and their fight on death via only in death does duty end has also been nerfed, you can now only do that if they hadn't already fought. Basically this has all changed the way that captains are used a bit, in general for the most part they don't tend to be deep strike murder machines anymore, it's no longer quite as efficient to just throw them in as individual missiles to delete a chunk of the enemy army, you more often to see them advancing alongside a main space marine battle line, engaging in close combat where it makes sense to, and ideally getting multiple turns of combat out of them. It's a lot more viable to run them this way in 9th, as everyone has to scrap for the central objectives, you can't just completely back off and shoot the enemy down for the first few turns, the enemy does kind of have to move up. So when we're fielding a captain, there's of course many options that you can choose from out of the Space Marines, and my favourite are the Jump Captains and increasingly the Bike Captain in the new edition. Jump and Bike Captains both get the extra movement, which I think is the main thing that you really need from them, allowing your captain to pick and choose his own combats, and gives him a better chance of him being the one to make the charge, as opposed to being charged himself. They both have their own merits, the Jump Pack Captain clocks in at 110 points before upgrades, and he has both Deep Strike and the Fly keyword, which allow him to hop over intervening terrain or enemy models, which is pretty handy, plus charge any enemy aircraft that might be around. At the moment I'm personally leaning more towards the Bike Captain though, he only costs 110, so is 10 points cheaper, gains toughness 5, an additional wound, and also a twin bolt gun, so is significantly tougher, and also has a little bit of range damage output. Typically, if I was investing a lot in them in melee, I would want one of those to make more chance of that melee happening. Though if you'd rather save a few points, you could think about either the Primaris Captain, Terminator Captain, Gravis Captain, or Captain on Foot. And of course, in the HQ slot, if you want a fighty character, there are other options. Lieutenants have one less wound and one less attack, but can still be good value point for point, and particularly any version of a lieutenant that has a storm shield is quite good value, as it means he's basically just as tough as a captain, but will cost less. You can certainly make good use of smash chaplain builds though, particularly that chaplain on a bike, given the relic Crozius, and that mantra of strength litany to help buff himself, and he becomes an absolute beast. For me, if you are absolutely buffing up a captain to the nines with lots of investment with warlord traits and relics and things, I would typically try and take a storm shield if you can. Obviously the invul save isn't important, as captains are going to have a 4 plus invul save from their iron halo anyway, but dropping from a 3 up save to a 2 up save is significantly more durable against anything that's AP 0 or AP minus 1. Usually worth the investment for 10 points, but if points are really tight and you're going for a more cheap build, then it's not the worst thing to leave off. In terms of weapons, I'd want something that's strength 5 plus, AP minus 2 or better, and multi damage at a minimum. Mastercrafted power swords are kind of entry level, power fist is sort of going halfway, and in general, I'd be looking to give them a thunder hammer to give the absolute maximum amount of damage output that you can get from the character. It just means that he can be a really credible threat to heavy armor and heavy infantry, and a lot less easy to ignore than if he's just damaged 2. Pretty much all chapters get access to a mastercrafted weapon, and this one can be a pretty decent choice for a relic. You could have a damage 4 thunder hammer, or a damage 3 power fist that also has AP-3. From the core codex space marines, my favourite relic for a smash captain is the Teeth of Terror Chainsword. It is only strength 5, AP-2 and 2 damage, but you get 3 additional attacks. 
and against a lot of targets it'll be just as good as the Thunderhammer if not better. Finally for keeping him safe, my favourite relic is the Armour Indomitus, gives him a nice 2 plus save which combos really well with a Storm Shield, and also you can have one turn of 3 plus Invul save just for when they need to keep safe the most. Finally you're going to want some sort of Warlord trait to make him a bit more fighty, and pretty much the go-to standard for a Smash Captain is the Imperium Sword, plus 1 strength, plus 1 attack and reroll charges is an excellent little package, he'll get to combat more reliably, and deal out more damage when he is there. That's really the one that all other Codex Warlord traits have to compete against and try and do better than, though several chapters do have the option to stack two Warlord traits on the same character, which can be a really nice option to get the Imperium Sword plus something else. Overall, I'd say a default build would be something like a Jump Pack or Bike Captain, armed with a Storm Shield and either the Thunder Hammer or the Teeth of Terror, and given the Imperium Sword Warlord trait, they'll be hard to remove and should deal a nasty amount of damage to whatever they run into. Finally, before we move on, I would just like to mention a couple of the other ways that we can buff Smash Captains. If you are going absolutely hell for leather, you could make them a Chapter Master for an extra 40 points. They could potentially buff other units as they move up, and then give themselves 4 rerolls when they make it to combat. It's very relevant if they're wielding a Thunder Hammer, or something with minus 1 to hit. Also, if you are advancing alongside other characters, you could think about having a Librarian on hand with Might of Heroes, much like the Imperium Sword, plus 1 strength, toughness and attack is rarely going to be bad for them, they'll both be significantly fightier and harder to kill. So let's go through some specific chapters then. In general I'd argue the Ultramarines are generally going to be best with options out of the main codex rather than anything in their supplement, unfortunately Ultramarines just don't really go in all that much for heroic characters trying to solo the enemy army, they tend to be more about command and strategic discipline. They do have some excellent beat stick characters in Marnius Kalgar and Rabute Gilliman though, if you want a slow moving buffing character who is also devastating in melee. The White Scars on the other hand might have some of the fightiest smash captains around, and in addition they also have the option of having their Khan on bike who has got his interesting spear attack and a bit of extra defence from that buckler. A pretty decent choice for a budget smash captain, you could maybe make that spear even more dangerous by making it master crafted as well. Their chapter tactic is pretty decent, advancing and charging will get them where they need to be, particularly on bikes, and their super doctrine for plus 1 damage is just absolutely fantastic. Imagine say a White Scars biker captain with the Teeth of Terror and the Imperium Sword, who will be getting 9 attacks at strength 6, AP minus 3 and damage 3 in the assault doctrine. Finally they have really quite a nice warlord trait in Chigorian Storm, this one's plus d3 extra attacks on the charge, and I believe that you can stack that with another Warlord trait on the same Warlord, so you could have that in addition to Imperium's Sword. Very few Smash Captains are quite as fast or hard hitting as the White Scars ones. Next we have the Iron Hands, who will be a little bit tougher than average with their Feel No Pain type save, and they do have a couple of good unique Warlord traits and relics. Probably their best Warlord trait is Student of History, this one allows them to do a gaming manoeuvre by consolidating back out of combat, and meaning that you can potentially charge an enemy, then consolidate away from them so they can't actually hit you back. There's also one for exploding sixes in melee, which can be a nice little damage buff if you want it. For relics, if you want to take one with a power axe, then you can take them Axe of Medusa on top of that, that's strength 7, AP minus 3, and flat damage 3, so I would consider that one as a nice little cheap alternative to a thunder hammer. Sure you lose one point of strength, but it's not hard to hit, and it does have better AP. Raven Guard have a fair bit of synergy with jump pack units, including options to allow advance and charging, but one of their nicest options is being able to deliver Smash Captains quite easily via the Master of Ambush to deploy them quite near enemy lines if you have turn 1. Master of Ambush could basically guarantee you a charge on exactly what you want. They do have some Relic Lightning Claws in the Ebon Claws, which are damaged too, but I'm not really sure they're significantly better than the Teeth of Terror to be honest. Finally, they do have access to Shrike himself, who's got the advantage of being a Chapter Master, and he's a properly blendy little combat machine all by himself, doubly so against characters. Next up we have the Salamanders, who are absolutely overflowing with things to make their characters both stronger and tougher. The chapter tactic in itself with a wound reroll per turn is really useful, particularly with high strength high damage attacks like Thunderhammers. One of my favourite common smash captain builds from the Salamanders is making them a really really tanky smash captain, take a bike one with plus 2 toughness, minus 1 to wound via the Salamanders mantle, and again you could potentially stack that with another Warlord trait of some sort to make them even tougher. They happen to have a Relic Thunderhammer as well called Drake Smiter, that one's an AP-3 Thunderhammer where every 6 to wound does a whopping 6 damage rather than the standard 3. The Imperial Fists like the Ultramarines tend to be a bit better on the shooting side of things rather than melee, but they've got a couple of Relic Power Fists going which can be quite potent, the Fist of Terror for the Imperial Fists, or the Fist of Vengeance for the Crimson Fists, 
which I'd say is the better one of the two. It's flat 3 damage and doesn't have the minus 1 to hit. Basically a cheaper thunder hammer that's better in every way. For durability, they do have a trait that allows them to half the amount of damage they suffer, which is pretty nice. And the Crimson Fists also have a Warlord trait called Refusal to Die, which gives them a chance of getting back up once they're slain. Black Templars, I'd say, are perhaps a little bit better at being support characters for infantry units going in. If you want a straight up fighty character, you might consider the Emperor's Champion. It's only 80 points, and for that cost, he's a real little murder machine. Otherwise, they're largely stuck with core codex options. Things that you could consider though would be things like the Frontline Commander trait, that one's plus one to advance and charge, and the Crusader's Helm which can put nearby units in the Assault Doctrine. You might also think about doing Smash Chaplain type builds with them, seeing as they do have so many good listeners on the go. Next up we have a couple of really solid melee chapters in the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves. Blood Angels are pretty much what made Smash Captains a thing in 8th edition, and their chapter tactic is still excellent. Plus 1 to charge and plus 1 to wound are both great. In particular, plus 1 to wound is amazing with the Teeth of Terror. That one's got a flurry of low strength attacks, so their chapter tactic will often be a flat 50% damage boost against anything that's really tough. One of my favourite Warlord traits for them is the Gift of Foresight. This one allows them 3 rerolls per turn. You get to reroll 1 hit, 1 wound roll, and 1 saving throw. In particular, the saving throw is really potent. With a 4 plus invul, it basically gives you a 50 50 chance of negating the first damage you take each turn. Artisan of War can be fun as well, it allows you to stack two different relics, though personally I'd take the Gift of Foresight myself, it is really really good. If you don't want him to buff nearby infantry units, you can think about making him a Death Company character, this gives him the Black Rage for a 6 plus feel no pain, plus 1 attack on the charge, and also access to a few rerolls via their Death Visions ability, could well be worth it if he's not looking to buff other units. The Blood Angels also have a Relic Thunder Hammer in the Hammer of Bar. That one has no negative to hit, AP minus 3 and damage 3, and as I mentioned the Teeth of Terror works incredibly well for Blood Angels, and is a really solid choice for making a fighty character more so. Next up we have Space Wolves, who again have another great chapter tactic, plus 1 to hit is amazing on anything such as a Power Fist or Thunder Hammer, things that you have minus 1s to hit with anyway. I'd pretty much always take one of these if I was running Space Wolves as a Smash Captain. You might think about the Thunder Wolf versions of Wolf Lords and Battle Leaders, that will give you Advance and Charge, extra toughness and an extra wound, and also the extra attacks from their wolf that they get in melee. If you're looking for a jump character though, you might strongly consider the wolf guard battle leader, as he's allowed to take a storm shield, whereas most lieutenants aren't. It makes him far far tougher, and also a slightly cheaper option than a wolf lord or captain. Good relics include the armour of Ross, which gives you some decent protection, as well as making an enemy unit fight last, which can be really potent. And I quite like the mountain breaker helm as well, if you take that and you fight with the character, and you roll a 2 plus after you've fought, and if you're successful, then the enemy unit takes a further d3 mortal wounds. Their 6 inch heroic intervention stratagem is free for characters as well, and most of the sagas are fairly useful in one way or another, though I'd say perhaps not quite as useful for pure damage dealing compared with the Imperium's sword. Finally, we come to Dark Angels and Death Watch. Dark Angels, I think, could really do with their codex coming out to give them some more options. At the moment, their unique stuff is pretty much limited to the Deathwing and Ravenwing, Although the Deathwing characters with an inner circle are pretty nice, they can only ever be wounded on a 4+. plus. The Key of Acrobale can be an interesting option compared with the Burning Blade if you were going for a Power Sword. Finally, I do think that the Death Watch again are generally going to be best with buffing the units around them. They have some really solid options such as the Dominus Aegis and the Beacon Angelus, and usually I think that these are going to be better valued than any of their unique fighty relics. If you are tooling up a captain for them though, they do have the option to steal some chapter traits off other chapters if they want to, and also potentially get two relics on the same character as well, maybe thinking about combining something like the Teeth of Terror and an Adamantine Mantle perhaps. So here are just a few example Smash Captains that I've built, to try and demonstrate a few things that you could potentially do. The first one we have a Blood Angels Bike Captain, though he could easily be a Jump Pack Captain should you want. The Bike Captain's 110 points, he's got a Storm Shield and the Teeth of Terror, and that absolutely excellent Gift of Foresight Warlord trait. In the Assault Doctrine, he's got 9 attacks at Strength 5, AP-3 and Damage 2, all with plus 1 to wound, and 2 rerolls when he attacks, meaning he averages something like 7 or 8 wounds on a vehicle, or about 6 dead intercessors per turn. Next up, we have a Salamander's Bike Chapter Master. He's had a lot more invested in him, and he's 170 points after that Chapter Master upgrade. With the Warlord trait, he's going to be Toughness 7 and minus 1 to wound, and we've stacked the Imperium Sword on top of that. At Toughness 7 and minus 1 to wound, it means that even things like Las Cannons are only going to be wounding him on a 4+, and things like Heavy Bolters will only be wounding him on 6s. 
With the Imperium Sword, he's going to get 6 attacks at strength 10, AP minus 2, and flat damage 3. And with the built-in Salamanders to wound reroll, it's going to be even deadlier. Finally, for another fairly cheap build, we've got a Wolfguard Battle Leader on Thunder Wolf. He's 125 points, again armed with a Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield, and taking the Imperium Sword and Armour of Ross. He'll still be hitting on 2s due to the Space Wolves chapter tactic, getting exploding 6s when he's in their doctrine, and will essentially have a 1 plus save between the Armour of Ross and the Storm Shield, though of course 1s always fail. As he's a Lieutenant equivalent rather than a Captain, he does have 1 less Thunder Hammer attack, but he gets the additional bite attacks from the Wolf, which will help him deal with hordes. So finally, let's just talk a bit about the in-game use of Smash Captains. And unlike the previous edition, I typically want to start them on the board rather than Deep Strike. Though of course that does depend on your army and playstyle. Typically, you want to make sure they're very, very safe on turn 1, and you absolutely don't want them getting gunned down or shot directly, and they want to be safe from sniper fire or any potential fast movement like flyers who might be able to zoom over the other side of the board and make themselves closest to the captain. Somewhere in the midst of the army, or maybe out of line of sight and a ground floor ruin are both decent options. If you are deep striking a jump captain though, the usual advice does apply. Ideally they want to be in cover or out of line of sight if possible, being safe from overwatch, and you need to be quite careful with shooting any of the enemy units that they're going to be charging, so your opponent just doesn't pull the models craftily and make your charge range very long. In the first turn or so, I generally want to move up the board and support other hard hitting units with their rerolls, generally keeping fairly safe before engaging enemy units carefully. In general, I think you're going to want to pick and choose your targets with Smash Captains just that little bit better. They'll typically be far weaker point for point in defence compared with squads. So ideally, you want to be charging them in alongside another big unit, so there's multiple things about to hit the enemy unit. We want to be picking on a unit maybe that's been injured, and is going to be fairly comfortably killed to death by your Smash Captain. If you're declaring multiple combats all over the map, remember that your opponent can interrupt, and it might often be a good idea to fight with the captain first, as they might be one of the best choices for being interrupted and getting killed before they get to strike. When you're in combat, make use of pile in and consolidate to the maximum amount, and try and think about where they're going to wind up. If they can be in light or dense cover, then that's usually a good thing. And you can think about plonking them on an objective, so that when your opponent comes to manoeuvre around things, you'll be able to heroic intervention against their units, and deal a bit of damage if they try and sneak the objective away from you. If the worst should happen and they do get killed in close combat, certainly remember only in death does duty end. 2 CP for a full round of melee from a smash captain can genuinely make a massive difference to a game. So I hope you've enjoyed a quick rundown of smash captains in 9th edition. I find them really quite good fun units to use, even if they're not quite as point and click kill everything units as they were in 8th in their heyday. With so many combos and options available to the space marines, I'm sure there's plenty of other options for them, so if you've been having any fun with any certain builds of them, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. It'll be interesting to see your take on a Smash Captain that works for you. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but we'll certainly be keeping the Space Marine content coming. And finally, if you are enjoying the videos, I'd just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Making all this content does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support the channel, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.